Sometimes in life, you get news that changes everything. Whether it's fair or not, how you deal with it can change your perspective. Michelle Dunaway has the story of a man from Traverse City who decided to take bad news and not only spread an important message, but also to cherish every moment. From the moment you set foot on the first tee, you can sense the difference. How do you, do you tell a story about a storyteller? Forest Dunes. It's one of the greatest courses in the country. Jim McIntyre has spent most of his life telling stories, right mostly in 30-second clips. Well, I've been in the advertising and marketing business all my professional career. Ah! Have you seen the side of the house lately? Many of you will know him from these old Astro Building commercials. He's always arguing with who he called his synthetic wife. And it'll improve the value of our home. Buy some, buy some, buy some. And you'll recognize his soothing voice as he almost welcomes you home on the radio and on television. And true family create true memories. It's very rewarding for me uh, because um, generally I'm reading somebody else's copy and the type of voice that I have generally is nice moving copy. It's not about having a good voice anymore. It's, ha it's having a voice that's listenable to that you can identify with and understand and be touched by. <laughs> And Jim has been touched by Northern oh, Living. No He's written two books about the beauty of this area and told his tales of life and loss. Sad I am for those who do not rage for another place, who feel no fever to be someplace else. I'm here because I want to be here. Um, I've had offers to move to Chicago years ago, and I don't want to go to Chicago. I want to be up here on the water. Last November, while taking part in a ritual he's loved for decades. I was a deer hunting season. I had um, noticed that I was having difficulty walking to and from the blind in terms of not having enough breath to get there. And I'm relatively active. I played a lot of golf, and this was, it wasn't was normal for me not to be able to walk two or three hundred yards with a rifle over my shoulder and not being able to breathe. So I went to the doctor, and eventually we took a look at the lungs and found a tumor. Um, then they found more. Which had metastasized to the liver and the brain, and they biopsied it to learn that it was um, small cell carcinoma, which is a very aggressive form of carcinoma, and caused, generally speaking, by one bad habit, and that was smoking. And I did smoke, stupidly, for a number of years, and um, it left me with uh, cancer. Ready? Ready. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. <laughs> so I'm not going to die next week, but my cancer is terminal, and we're just going to stretch it out to the best of our ability. With that attitude, and with the love of his life, Joni, at his side, he's decided to fight. Along with chemotherapy, he's had to have treatments on his brain to stop the cancer from spreading. This was his 10th and last treatment. He will need more chemo later. Jim's been telling some sort of story his whole life. And out of all his books, commercials, and 30-second sound bites, these are perhaps the words he really wants you to hear. If you don't smoke, don't start. If you do smoke, quit. Because eventually it will hurt you. Just take care of yourself. Because I didn't for a long time. And uh, look what happened. Nobody lives forever, but when you cherish every moment, the end may be easier to understand. I have terminal cancer, but um, the, the diagnosis may be terminal, but the prognosis is not because I can fight it. Uh, and I have reason to fight it. I certainly wouldn't want to face having cancer alone. So to have the partnership of a wonderful spouse, somebody that you really, really love, um, helps a lot. But having said that, when it's time, um, then I'm, I'm comfortable with it. I've had a spectacular life. 